Okay, I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, due to the governor's statewide disaster declaration relating to the COVID-19 pandemic and current public health guidelines for social distancing, I've determined that it's not prudent for the members of the village board or staff to convene in person for tonight's meeting. Therefore, the members of the village board are attending this meeting by video conference. The same conditions require barring access to the public for in-person attendance. In light of those limitations, the public's invited to attend and listen to the meeting through the Zoom platform or by phone as indicated on the meeting agenda. To comply with the Open Meetings Act requirements virtual meetings, tonight's meeting is being recorded. And if I could ask uh, Village Clerk Schmidtke to uh, take a uh, roll call uh, and uh, make sure everyone can be heard. Uh, Trustee Borowski, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Trustee Chris Meyer, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Michaud, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee O'Connor, can you hear me? Here. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Trustee O'Reilly, can you hear me? You're muted, Bobby. Yes. Thank you. And Trustee Tanucci, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. All right, um, all present and accounted for. Uh, if I could ask everyone to say a Pledge of Allegiance, I would appreciate that. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag. of the United, United States, 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 States of America, America. America. to the Republic, Republic. for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation, one nation under, God, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. All right, welcome everyone. <clears throat> um, Thank you. The first item on the agenda uh, are the homeowners association uh, visitors. Um, I don't know if anyone is here from uh, Bridalwood. I don't think so, because um, all I see is uh, Amy and uh, Ken. <laughs> uh, also from the Indian Creek Club, my subdivision, uh, I don't see Rich Tourette or Debbie Fuse here either. So um, we'll just move right along. Uh, the next item is public comment. Um, I'm gathering that there's no public comment tonight, or is there any? Great job, Friday. Um, that was awesome. That's yep. It. Thank you. That's nope. it. Thanks, Amy. Uh, all right, then let's keep uh, moving. Um, the next item on the agenda is the village engineers report. Jeff, you want to take it away? All right, absolutely. Thank you. So. Uh, for the engineer's report uh, for this week, I'll just start out by saying a lot of the uh, construction projects uh, throughout the village are either done or nearing completion. Uh, last week, I uh, noted that both North Kruger and South Kruger Road are substantially complete. Uh, North Kruger, the trees will be evaluated and likely replaced in the spring. Uh, the other two projects that I've commented on the last uh, few meetings are the Stemple parking lot and the Robert Parker Coffin path. The Stemple parking lot, the majority of that is complete. Now, the one thing that uh, I have brought up to, I think, uh, uh, in a couple different email strings, but uh, wanted to bring it forward to everybody is the parking lot, the striping arrows for the directional traffic, uh, two things, one, uh, they are going to remain uh, a temporary paint uh, for the winter, but uh, they will be installed so people will see them um, until they get worn away. Uh, and then the other thing, um, south, uh, to the west of Cigars and more, uh, there was an error with the uh, arrows out there, and that will be a two-way access. We're still working with the contractor. Um, to get that rectified. Uh, I checked in with uh, our field guy this afternoon and to my knowledge, it, that hasn't been done yet, but uh, uh, we certainly wanna get that done before the snow flies, uh, certainly in the temporary paint condition. Uh, so people know that that's uh, two way. Uh, it it wasn't because I drove by this evening before the board meeting. Yeah, it has it, not, yeah. It has not, okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, uh, so we still got that and then uh, we're, uh, as far as the two-way access on Old McHenry Road, uh, the county has uh, 
given their conceptual okay for that. Uh, they have a couple permit review comments that we're working through on that so that we can get that uh, that work done so that uh, can be formally and officially a two-way access um, as soon as possible as well. Um, let's see here. The Robert Parker Coffin Road path, uh, that is also substantially complete. Um, the pedestrian um, crossing signals, if you will, they are installed. We, we need to uh, get IDOT's uh, attention and get them out there so that we can actually officially turn them on so people can use those. So that has not yet been scheduled kind of a uh, short week this week. Uh, hopefully that happens um, next week. What about um, the crosswalk? Will there be a crosswalk installed too and striped? Uh, I was uh, I was informed that they put down the paint crosswalk uh, today. So you know, I missed it. I went right by there. I didn't even see okay. it. That's not good. Okay. I'll, I'll double check that, Bill. Um, obviously, if uh, they said that it was done and then you didn't see it, uh, I'm going to double check. I have been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good, so, by the way. <laughs> busy intersection, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, a couple other things that I just want to touch on, um, the village's uh, Lake Michigan water, there's been, there was discussion about that a couple of weeks ago for the parents landing and uh, manager Jackson and myself, we're going to get together next week to uh, put uh, more of that uh, together and on paper as far as finances running the uh, current village uh, water treatment plant uh, so that uh, uh, helpful, meaningful and uh, um, otherwise uh, impactful discussion be happen, can be had at the, the village's uh, strategic workshop on the 4th. So that's actually not about Heron's Landing. That's about- Right, but downwind. yeah, I, I, that's with, well, yeah, it's, I, I wanna get, with, let, get uh, everything squared away with Heron's Landing as well, because there's also the, uh, the component that the county is currently using their allocation for right. Heron's Landing. So, um, sorry, Kent, I just kind of rolled uh, water into uh, one, <laughs> one category, but there's many, many, uh, uh, nuances and fingers to that. Right. So with Heron's Landing, the question is, whose allocation is the water usage being charged against? So that's an open question. Sounds like there'll be some discussion about that and some resolution. There's there's some communication that's going to happen before that with Lake County so we can bring okay. back to the board um, um, uh, their position. Okay. And, and just to clarify, the agreement, the intergovernmental agreement we have with the county expressly addresses that. So uh, that was three or four directorships ago at the uh, Public Works Department. And it may be something that just didn't get carried over during one of the handoffs. So, so it, 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 it sounds like, yes, there was an agreement to charge the water against our allocation but the meters were never installed to allow that to happen. No, it, it's actually just a matter of how it is reported to IDNR. They right. know how much water is going into Heron's Landing, but, and at one point the IDNR uh, LMO reports for Heron's Landing were under the, in the name of the village prepared by the county. My, presumption is that somewhere along the way uh, somebody not knowing what the intergovernmental agreement said simply changed the name of the uh, the water uh, uh, allocation, allocation uh, from village of Long Grove to Lake County and okay. uh, we just need to get that ironed out. Okay so as long as we know how much water is going into Heron's Landing we also know how much is being billed in total. So then we can calculate how much is lost, which should be almost nothing since it's a new system. And that's yeah, something and, that needs to be reported. And, and actually that's what is reported every year in that LMO. It just happens no longer apparently to be in the village's name versus the county's name. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds good. So that's the Heron's Landing part. And then the other part is uh, basically an economic study and other factors too, to see um, if it makes Maybe. sense to run Lake Michigan water downtown. 
we're, we're we are going to present the uh, we're we're going to present uh, for discussion a cost benefit analysis right. as it relates to uh, and keeping in mind the scatter concern that you had to uh, uh, Trustee Tanucci, but um, yeah, we're going to do a cost benefit analysis analysis to present to the board uh, as to uh, the viability the feasibility or I'm sorry the viability of um, of going to Lake Michigan water. Right. Okay. Good. Um, question, question related, but not exactly. So that will be prepared for the strategic um, uh, discussion meeting. Will we have that in advance? We, 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 so we, we, should, can... we should have our data by Tuesday. So it'll okay. be- Okay. And if several when would we have it? <laughs> Tuesday. Okay. Thanks. question if i may please chris is the scope that is just referred to of connecting to lake michigan water a comprehensive scope for the village or just for downtown to the best of my knowledge based off of what i saw in the previous submission of a grant was that it was just for downtown a grant to whom deco which is isn't that the Rippy? Isn't that the Rippy? Uh, or the well, yeah, last that? last year, uh, June, we uh, the village uh, submitted a rebuild Illinois public infrastructure grant to the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, and uh, Chris, uh, that was for the extension and connection for the downtown uh, only. Why is that? <clears throat> I don't. Think we have a plan for the rest of the village, do we? Well, actually, you got to go back to a number of years ago where a vote was taken, where it would cost, I think, the average homeowner six to seven thousand dollars a year for thirty years in order to bring water to their homes throughout the whole village. So that was the the plan of record that probably should be pulled out as part of this discussion too. Now, obviously, some you know, Heron has water. I have water where I am. So um, you know, we're, we're there's differences throughout the you know, the community. I, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up too that um, when we were talking about different funding mechanisms to do this, ARPA funds came into play, this DECO uh, grant came into play because the DECO grant was already in the works prior to me coming on board, um, that all we're doing is presenting the cost benefit analysis to the board. We're not assuming that there's going to be anything happening uh, in regards to Lake Michigan water. That's going to be a decision of the body. We're just putting the analysis together. Right. This is data that's being prevented to aid us in making the decision. Correct. I have a question on another topic <clears throat> when we can move on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are we, um, is it on the engineer's report or is it because um, Jeff's still working his way through it? Oh, I'm sorry. Go, okay. I'll wait. Yep. Yes, it's on, okay. the, it's on the engineer report, but I'll wait. Jeff, okay. keep working your way through it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a number of other projects that we just keep tracking on the engineer's report. No uh, significant updates on those. I just wanted to highlight a couple things. One, uh, still trying to uh, get that light pole uh, replaced in front of 238 uh, RPC, the olive tap. Um, Material shortages on that one. Still, uh, still waiting for that to to come from, uh, you know, where it was fabricated. So hopefully that uh, gets done here in the next month. Uh, another item, 16C, uh, a new item on the engineers' report. Uh, back earlier this year, there was, and even going back to last year, there was discussion about traffic calming on Checker Road. Uh, both for um, the uh, cut-throughs that happen in that on that corridor, um, you know, using Schaefer and Checker, uh, but also uh, a safety thing uh, because of the testimony and the comments and the feedback uh, the village had received about uh, cars passing buses on, on Checker Road. So earlier this year, when the budget was being discussed and approved. Uh, there's a line item in there for $25,000 for a, a choker on Checker Road. And we are moving that project forward, uh, looking to 
have that installed um, in late winter, April uh, 2022, uh, before the fiscal year ends. Um, so the, the process for that would be to get the, the design, the parameters and finalized, uh, get pricing for that, and then bring it back to the board for the uh, official um, go no go for, for construction. So I just put that in there as uh, item 16C. Uh, so that, that hadn't been on the engineer's report. So hopefully uh, if you, that explain that uh, kind of gives a background and why that's there, if there's any questions, certainly uh, please that ask. That totally took me by surprise, Jeff. I thought I, that totally took me by surprise. I thought we were approving, examining it, not moving forward with it. No, that, that we're, my, we're, the best of my recollect, the best of my recollection no. is we talked about variety of things, and I know this is something that some people. But we did. I, I that really, that really took me by surprise. I did not think we were proceeding with that. We are. We are proceeding with bringing to the board uh, the option of the uh, choker check or the I'm sorry, the checker choker. Checker choker. Uh, yeah, the checker choker. And the choker, and the choker is the best option. Because that was the thing we went around and around on. I mean, Chris, you, you're making noises, but to me, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Why don't we let Chris talk face? too? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Chris. Well, I want Jennifer raised her hand too, if you noticed. Um, yeah, that was the one issue I had on the engineer's report. I wanted to talk about. I, 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 I was completely shocked by uh, that line item on the engineer's report as well. Um, I also think that lumping it under miscellaneous, blocking off a major public. And maybe major is too big. A significant public road with a choker without any discussion, I think is a little preemptive. And certainly without a public hearing to talk about what that alternatives looks like or what they are um, to let people input into this. Um, obviously we're gonna, we, we can help fix a problem at an intersection for, I don't know, 10, 15 houses, but I, I just can't imagine us choking Schaefer Road or Checker Road, excuse me, um, because so many people do use that road. I think um, not, not at all in favor of just the rough concept of, of closing or choking Checker Road. Let me assure, let me assure the board that uh, there was nothing moving forward that we were looking at putting together a package for the board review, for the board's review and discussion. Not that we were moving forward. And if that's the impression, uh, well, then it's, it says right there, construction. No, no, I understand. Oh, Chris, absolutely. I, mean, I don't know. And no, Chris, Maybe I missed it. I don't know. It says right no, there, construction April you're 2022. Absolute, you're absolutely uh, right. You're absolutely right. I When I looked at the report this afternoon again, and I caught it, it I could see it being interpreted that way without a doubt. Uh, my apologies on it. This was supposed to be put a package together for the board to discuss and take a look at and have some discussion as if to that's where they want it to go. That's, 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 absolutely, Michel? that's absolutely totally what it was going to be. No, it wasn't going to be because we also had suggestions of speed humps and speed bumps as well as the uh, choker on checker. It was not. We're putting it together. I asked Jeff to get us the cost so you guys had uh, so the board had accurate costs on it. So when they made that assessment, they would have those numbers in front of them, but nothing was going to proceed. There was no green light on anything until it went before the board. Jenny, you had your hand raised. Um, no, I was just the same thing I was just going to say the wording was a little misleading then. Um, yeah. But yeah, Anne and Chris, um, I actually reached out to Rita and Anne saying, did I miss something? Because I don't remember. I remember talking about this, but I'm like, was I not at a meeting? So, so, so I think all, it was alarming. <laughs> so all I will tell you is all I did was say to, um, to Greg was that we had money in the budget to do a, a choker on checker and that we needed to look at that and to, to come up with options there. So that's what this is. So and I'm going to respectfully say I. I We've talked, you've, you've used the word choker, Bill, but I feel like we heard from some of the residents. I, I, I'm with Chris. I think we need a little more of local oh, resident absolutely, absolutely, input. Uh, absolutely. And, yeah. But, but you got to get, you know, a magnitude of what it would, you know, what it, what it would cost and just a starting point somewhere. Right. So 
I, I don't, I, I don't know. I you just can't just don't have wanna... a public hearing without having anything on the table, right? So I very much agree. I, I completely, yeah. I completely agree with that. But I also and, think, and, and I didn't um, and word I also... this, I didn't word any of this, any of this way. And I've made it perfectly clear that the board has not approved this. I just asked to make sure we bring it forward. As the village president, I did that. So, yep, yep. I, I just hope that we, um, I don't know how to say this. We ended up like looking at the design of Stemple long after looking at all of the costs and where that was coming from. I just don't want to get in that kind of back against the wall conversation at the end on this one either, even though it's much smaller. And, and, and just to uh, add a sense of reassurance to the board, and I understand the language there, and uh, um, I apologize for not catching that earlier and, and providing some clarification, but the, um, the I cannot approve anything over $10,000. So it would absolutely have to come to the board for discussion and uh, rest assured to the, uh, I wanna give the board the assurance that that's not something I would have done arbitrarily or on my own. So Rita, I'm, not, you're, uh, I'm, I'm not that okay. nuts. Rita, it looks like you're about to say something. Oh, no, I'm listening. I, <clears throat> I, I agree with everybody else. Um, <clears throat> does it cost us money to get to pull together the, the, put, the cost, potential costs of two or three or four of these options we talked about? And, you know, like, is it an engineering study where we're spending thousands? <clears throat> I, I don't think we're spending thousands on it. It's, it is there, is there, the more data the board wants, obviously there's gonna be more expense with it. But if you're looking to say, let's explore multiple options and see what that brings us and you wanna get a cost that would be involved with that, uh, Trustee O'Connor, um, that's certainly something we could put together. Yeah, <clears throat> well, it, it wouldn't, you know, thanks. I appreciate that and it wouldn't be up to me. <clears throat> we had talked about speed bumps. We talked about um, choker. We talked about a speed table. And, and we really we just discussed it. I don't I don't know that we came to a uh, an opinion or a conclusion on anything except that the situation down there is unsafe. <clears throat> so I would be interested in, in knowing what the residents of the area think about it <clears throat> and the approximate cost for each of those options or any any other idea that somebody may have. Trustee O'Reilly, did or you? Per, perhaps yeah. are there other options? <clears throat> let me uh, let me get with Jeff's. Uh, Jeff's on vacation this week, except for he's here. And then uh, let me turn around and get with Jeff. We'll lay out, we'll put together options for the board uh, so the board can discuss and um, have a have an all encompassing uh, uh, data to make a decision. Um, if I might add, um, you may not have noticed. I mean, I mean, I was shocked to see a choker on, on the engineering report. But what you may not have noticed was that the stu any study of bridge protection was removed without the dignity of discussing with me or with Scott Hoyne or answering and finding out what the result of, um, I forget, uh, Wooten Engineering, what their response was. And, and, and I never heard from either Jeff or Greg what their response was. I've had it for two months because I asked them directly for it, but I never had any conversation with either one of you. And now suddenly it's off the report. So I, I mentioned that just for, for in passing. I think that's a COVID oversight. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, but no, actually, I, why, Jeff, why, why was it taken off the report? I'm not to put you in the hot seat. I actually don't know. So. Uh, well, I don't know either. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, so, you know, uh, Manager Jackson and I, um, we have yet to discuss the two proposals that we had. We, had, we do, Bobby um, got the proposal from uh, Wooten Electric, and then we also got on one. September 29th. Correct. We got one from September. Wooten Electric, and then we got. Two months ago. Correct. Correct. And then we got another one uh, from 
think it was uh, utility to dynamics. That um, was before. It was before Wooten. Oh yeah. no, no, we went to, we went to Wooten. And and what's so embarrassing is that Scott Hoyne has been a dedicated provider of of knowledge and 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 effort into Long Grove and, and we have treated him very poorly. So I yeah, uh, Greg and I um, need to carve out some time to go painstakingly through those two proposals. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, intentionally take that off. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> you got caught, babe. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that that's still an active project. Um, well, no, just, it really, just, but, well, it, 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 it's, yeah. Keep going, Jeff, thank you. So um, the other, the other item that's uh, on the, that I would touch on is just the uh, the berm over at the Grove. Uh, we have not yet uh, verified the accuracy of their as-built survey. I think I mentioned uh, last board meeting that they were going to submit the as-built survey and we were going to uh, double check that to make sure that that was correct. Uh, the village forester did go out um, to the berm and found a few deficiencies, actually quite a few deficiencies with the uh, the landscaping that was installed over there. So um, I, th I think that would uh, warrant some uh, some further discussion. I don't know if the, the context of the engineer's report is the appropriate uh, forum for that. I would like, uh, let me interject on that, um, Jeff. We haven't had a chance to talk yet today, but um, I communicated with Vic uh, the position of where the Grove is at. This is based off of a, a meeting ago, I believe. I had mentioned to the board that myself and Jeff were gonna go out and speak to the um, uh, Jimmy Trumbull out there with the, uh, with, who's supposed to be taking care of the berm. Uh, Jeff and I got out there, they were doing work. We had some concerns about the hi height of the berm. We had some concerns about the planting material. Uh, it was at that point we had asked the arborist to go out and take a look to make sure that the planning material matched the landscaping plan that was presented. And then we also had issues with the as-built. Um, you go pretty much, and, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, Jimmy Trumbull basically told us that this was it. This was the work they were putting in there and they were going to, they were going to, um, that, that's all he was going to do. And um, that's what we, that's where we ended up. We ended up with Jimmy Trumbull saying, this is what we were gonna do. He said that the people out there had the landscaping plan, but we found that the landscaping plan didn't match um, actually what, what needed to be done. Um, that being the case, uh, what I would ask the board to, to do if they're so inclined is to see if they are satisfied that the work there is adequate. Uh, we know we have a bond that we're holding. Uh, this, I had a difficult time determining how tall that berm was because this work all happened prior to me arriving. Um, but I guess I would, I, we're in a difficult position in, in the sense of, um, do we accept this work? Do we secure it? Do we take the bond back and then uh, complete the work on our own? Uh, Vic, you may be able to speak to some of those options a little better than I'm being able to articulate, but um, we need some direction from the board on what our next step is going to be. It certainly is not complete to um, what we were promised it would be completed. To. Am I wrong, Jeff? No, you're right on, Greg. Vic? Um, well, we have several options. One is we can simply go pull the bond. There's not a lot, you know, we have to detail what the deficiencies are in doing so, but that's just a matter of logging uh, that information down. Um, I did receive an email from their attorney, I want to say the day after our last board meeting, and he he was doing a victory lap. We finished. 
Um, I sent that along to Jeff and to, to Greg, and uh, Jeff made it clear that, uh, yeah, they're at the wrong finish line, and uh, they're going to need to uh, still do more. At that point, the Forester had not yet been out, and Jeff was still awaiting the topo, but uh, it, it seemed, if I, uh, I don't want to misstate what, what I understood from Jeff, but it seemed that uh, it was obvious that there were some shortcomings, and I think that that's been borne out. So we, you know, the other thing that we have is obviously the weather, and not quite sure from a practical perspective what can be done uh, before uh, the the winter shuts everything down. Uh, but certainly we can pull the bond before then and have everything lined up for the spring if we're unable to do it now. Do you mind if I just share a quick picture of just what it looks like right now too? Because I went out there today and did that. Do you mind? Would that be helpful? If I could just, um, this is what it looks like. So it's um, may not be exactly the spec, but um, it looks a lot better. So that's where I think everyone should take a look at it. And then we'll get the details from Greg and Jeff on what the shortcomings are, right? But that's what it looks like, that helps. Can I ask what, you know, I, I, I see the paucity of trees. Um, <clears throat> are, are, when you say number of deficiencies, are you referring mostly to the lack of landscaping or are you referring to the amount of dirt that's still there? I'll defer to, Je I'll defer to both, that's correct. And I'll defer to Jeff on the elevation and, and the amount of dirt that's there, but we have a number of things from the arborist uh, regarding some of the planting uh, that um, could be corrected in my, in, just in my view, it could be corrected in the spring if, if the board wanted to go that way. Uh, Jeff, you want to talk about the elevations in the berm? Yeah, well, the elevations, like I mentioned, we're still um, looking to get those uh, verified. They provided an as-built survey that um, said that they've met all of the uh, approved line and grades for the berm. Uh, this is now the third as-built survey that they submitted that said that. Uh, the previous two, uh, they had significant earthwork yet to be done and material to be exported from the site. And to Jenny's comment a couple board meetings ago, um, you know, after there was uh, the, uh, the directive that we had given them that, hey, you need to remove some material specifically at the northeast corner of the berm. And then all of a sudden we get the, we're at the finish line comment and the, the timing didn't work out. Uh, or didn't seem to make sense as far as when they actually uh, remove that extra material. I see. And have the the neighbors behind the berm have have they called Village Hall? Have they made any comments that like they're upset or <clears throat> not 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 during not during my my tenure? No, I don't. I can't speak to what happened before that. Okay, thank you. Has anybody kept a log on what this has cost us? We, we can track down the dollar amounts from an engineering perspective and a time and staff perspective, uh, perspective yes. Well, I assumed engineering, we weren't being charged. Well, some of it goes to that, it goes to the escrow, but I thought you were assuming like staff time and... No, I'm, I'm talking legal time and your time yeah. and, 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 and the forester's time and... and, and yeah, we 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 could stop. Yeah, yeah, we could, we, could, we, could, we could put those numbers together absolutely. And, and to clarify, since the settlement agreement was executed, they have been delivering monies into escrow to pay all of the review and inspection uh, costs of the engineer, and I think there's probably about six thousand dollars still in that escrow, um, and, and I think. Uh, I'm not quite sure, Jeff, how far that goes in terms of the billing cycles, but uh, they have been uh, reimbursing the village for all of those costs uh, during that time. But not yours? No.
Thankfully, I've been more the gadfly, not the uh, the worker bee. Well, so I think there was an ask. Um, we're going to get the you know deficiencies documented, um, and the ask is take a look at it yourselves too, um, and uh, you know I guess provide feedback uh, for the next board meeting. Everyone's okay with that, uh, Jeff. Let's keep moving. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's what I had on the uh, the engineer's report uh, to highlight tonight. Um, again, my apologies for the the poor choice of words and the um, uh, incidental remover remove all excuse me of the overheight detection. Uh, Greg, if uh, if I can ask that we uh, make a point to discuss that uh, Monday when we meet. Uh, so we can uh, move that discussion forward. I think that would be uh, a good uh, strategy. Um, may, I, may, uh, may I ask one more question, more of Vic than, than, than engineering? And that is with the Eleanor um, um, time being spent by Jeff for getting the um, grant application and, and meetings with them and so forth. At what time, at what point are we tiptoeing around this being private property that we're doing village money, village expenses? As I understand, Lake Eleanor has, uh, and I, I may be misunderstanding, but Lake Eleanor has some uh, in a rea in a reaction between the village owned uh, part of that and I and the private part of it, there are two pipes under the road, if I remember, that are the villages. Jeff, help me out. If no, no wrong, wrong, wrong development. Oh, yeah, that's three lakes. Go ahead. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I don't need an answer now, but I would like an answer in the future as to at what point are we violating. Um, private property at village costs being spent on private property. I, I, I'll uh, confer with Greg and, and Jeff to find out exactly what that arrangement is. And particularly if there are village uh, drainage ways that are impacted by that. Thank and, you. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, you're not writing a grant for that property. What you did was contact stormwater management to see if there was grant money available. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was the first thing. And then this, the next thing was to put the grant application together. Um, and I guess I understood from our last meeting that uh, we were going to take the lead in getting that. Now there's a, a lot of that that Lake Eleanor Estates will have to do as well. Right. Yeah, we're just staring the ship on that, but uh, but uh, it's still time. Time right, is money. No, it, absolutely, trustee. Absolutely. Any other um, questions for uh, Village Engineer Perry? I have two issues, uh, Mr. President. If I can, uh, one of them is Old Hicks and Checker, the parking lot that the Lake. Uh, Lake County Forest Preserve was working on. It's paved. It's going to be striped tomorrow. Uh, we're looking at about two weeks for that job to be complete. And then I was contacted by the Lake County Forest Preserve District to discuss the uh, plant screening at Buffalo Creek uh, that uh, was part of an intergovernmental agreement some time ago. Uh, they presented the uh, screening plan and a time in action for them to begin the work. And I'll keep the board updated. Uh, as to the progress on those projects. All right, any questions there? No, thanks. That's good news. I'm sure everybody down there will appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, um, moving, moving along then to the next item on the agenda, which is consideration of resolution authorizing a high deductible health insurance policy with Blue Cross Blue Shield, a dental insurance policy with Delta, Delta Dental, and a health reimbursement account for full-time village employees. Um, that's interesting because I think we all have a part-time on there, but uh, I'm going to let uh, village manager Jackson review. This is, this is uh, for the full-time employees as part of the, the, the benefit package. 
employees are entitled, uh, as part of our benefit package, entitled to health care insurance. Uh, the village has worked with uh, um, Krug as the insurance company. Uh, we do not have a lot of an, uh, a large number of employees uh, that take uh, in, uh, health care coverage. In fact, we only have two. Uh, we are looking at an increase uh, in this uh, proposal of 9.95 percent, but compared to uh, last year, and, and this happened when I first got on, there was a discussion of going from 90-10 to 80-20. Uh, it didn't happen last year. The board said to go ahead and continue 90-10 through the end of the fiscal year. Um, this this process or this uh, uh, benefit will be 80-20. And based on the 80-20 split, there ends up being a little bit of savings to the village every year per person of $314. Uh, thank you to Trustee Tanucci, who has a background in insurance, who asked, asked us to verify um, employees that are Medicare eligible to see if we would be able to even reduce our costs further. Uh, we're firming that up right now. We have one of the employees who are uh, participating in this insurance program that is Medicare eligible. So we believe that what is presented to you will even be less once we uh, firm up the Medicare uh, uh, the Medicare portion for that other employee. So the board's, uh, the staff is recommending the renewal of the current Blue Cross Blue Shield plan with a 9.95% uh, overall increase. The renewal of the HRA plan uh, without an annual increase in a January 2022 employer employee contribution rate uh, from 90-10 to 80-20. This is also a renewal that will renew uh, for Delta Dental, which is totally absorbed by the employee. Uh, the plan that we're choosing to go with uh, allows the employee to retain a continuity and coverage and physical uh, physician access. And again, the rate change will result uh, to a $314 per year saving per employee based on uh, calendar year 2021 premiums. Any discussion? Um, I just have I just have a couple of <clears throat> info type questions. <clears throat> please, please. On the the nine nine point nine increase nine 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 point nine percent increase. Where does where does that come from? What what part of the plan? It's the it's the overall price of the plan, and then and then it's divided up between the employee and employee employer contribution. Well. Yes, no, I, I I understood that. I just meant where are the numbers different? And you're you're saying it's just the the quoted price for the coverage. That's correct. And the the HRA, do you know what? I didn't. I and forgive me. I forgot. Actually, we're having a meeting tonight, so I didn't have a chance to look it up. On the HRA, what what is the current HRA amount for full time employees? It is. Um, the employee pays the first fourteen hundred. Employer reimburses the next forty five hundred, and then the employee pays the next one thousand. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So I, I I knew I remembered something like around five or six thousand, but I wasn't I wasn't quite sure. So mm -hmm. that 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 part we bumped up a little bit. No, it it, it exact it, it remains the exact same from last year. Okay, and what's the benefit to the employees of a dental plan? where they're they're paying everything all of the premium how does that work how does that work out it gives them a, i would tell you i don't think there's a great dental plan anywhere but there's yeah. uh yeah. but it but it gives them the uh ability to have some relief from coverage uh my understanding is that the village uh, the Delta Dental Plan that's come with the health care plans have always been an employee, 100% uh, employee contribution. I see. I see. I, I, I understand. Well, <laughs> somebody just had some expensive, expensive dental surgery. Um, it does help to have the coverage, even if it isn't the best. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I understand. I understand. <clears throat> I got it. Thank you. I, I think we've asked this in the past. Is there any way we could cooperatively work with other entities? to you know to be able to have more scale yeah there 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 is trustee and and uh denise and i've been discussing it the the, the difficulty 
uh, with with uh, what we did with the insurance as well as the uh, pro um, property casualty that we'll be coming back to the board with on the 14th is um, it was the timing of the changeover in manager uh, being able to get in here, develop an RFP, get the RFP out, be able to adequately look at it. Uh, we are firm in our resolve to make sure that we go out for a more competitive bid next year because it appears that this just keeps getting repeated and repeated and repeated. Um, myself and uh, Denise had a conversation today with our property casualty insurance and just to further support the uh, telling him we were not satisfied with um, um, how they quoted us in the property casualty, but we recognized that the time was not in our favor for this. Um, the state of Illinois has a uh, insurance program that local units of government can get involved with, and because of scale, to your point, the large numbers, that there may even be a less expensive uh, and, and better insurance uh, less expensive to the village, less expensive to the employee, and better coverage uh, with a lesser deductible for the employees, which is one thing I want to look at next year. And then with property casualty, we want to start looking at potential groups where it's where it's uh, where it makes sense. So yeah, we we definitely. I was not uh, I was not thrilled with what we got back on insurance, but it's nobody's fault. It was a it was a problem with timing, but we need to do a better job of of, of addressing that. Thank you. Again, thank you, Trustee Tanucci, for uh, your assistance. Uh, it, it was important during this uh, as we were looking at this. Sure, you're welcome. Any other um, questions? Yep, Chris, go ahead. Thank you. Appreciate being recognized. <clears throat> I, I'm not an insurance guy, so my question is on uh, the pharmaceutical and the pres prescription coverage. How does that work out when I'm when I'm reading like Report 5B 2022, it says non-preferred Rx and preferred Rx is 100%. I, I don't know what that means. That means we the, the plan pays 100%, the employee pays 100%. What does that mean? Where are you looking? Um, on the report, the 5B document that was included, 05B. 05B. Oh, here we go. 40. I, don't need to look at the report. I'm just asking, how do we cover far, you know, the, the prescription coverage? What, what, what's the story? I will have to dig into that trustee. That's a big part of this too, isn't it? Or not? I mean, I just, I'm just trying to understand what, you know, what it is. <laughs> so well, if you want me I'm to I'm looking at it, the, it yeah. says there's, Deductible than zero percent, right? So they don't pay anything. Um, does that strike anybody as being odd or not? Well, what's the deductible? You got the um, what is the deductible? So you're talking about uh, so pharmacy now? A pharmacy, yeah. Individual deductible. Deduct individual deductibles fourteen hundred dollars. Well, for the individual, yep. And then it's what, 4,000? I guess they're both individual, right? Yeah. I mean, you could blow through that in two shots of Embril, right? <laughs> so, my point being, um, you know, to me, it strikes me as we have no distinction between preferred and non preferred. And to me, I think, you know, I'd like to, you know, drive employees into preferred and generics versus the non preferred, because like an Embril shot is you know, a thousand dollars a pop kind of thing. Um, I know our program at work has that kind of delineation and it's actually has four classifications, you know, generic then preferred and non-preferred and holy crap, don't ever buy this stuff kind of thing. And uh, I see Jennifer's got her hand up. Jennifer, sorry to interrupt you. Um, uh, Manager Jackson, you said the word when you were prefacing this thing and I just wanted to maybe uh, present a different emotion to that word. You said the word employees are entitled to healthcare benefits. I, I seem to think that we offer healthcare benefits to offer a comprehensive healthcare package. So, so don't wanna get tied up in, 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 in linguistics tonight more, but I don't know if entitled would be the word that I would agree with.
Yeah, I was using it as rela in relation to the plan says that they are they can receive health care benefits. So I thank you. Not that they're entitled to it by law or any other any other. Jenny, you were going to say something. You no, I, it's fine. It, I'm, it, thank you. <laughs> What's our deadline, Bill? When do we need to approve this? Next by the next meeting because it's got to start at the first of the year, right? So, yes. Got one more meeting if you want to kick the can. Um, so, I mean, if I understand this correctly, What's the total annual cost, Greg? Well, the total annual cost um, will be for two employees about $27,000. $27,000, okay. At, at, at the top end. And that's obviously that's down from last year because uh, um, you're providing your own insurance. Uh, we don't have a village uh, planner anymore too. Um, and Denise has her own insurance, so we just have it for two people, which is part so of the to, challenge in getting and Margarita too. too. And Margarita too. So it's it's um if the board wants to look at this further, we can move it to the next meeting or who are, who are the two employees? Natalie, um, Natalie and uh, and Sherry. I thought Natalie was part time. No, full time. Oh. I, I just I I appreciate the um, the scrutiny and I do would very much appreciate looking for more competitive work next year. Um, I personally I, I'm fine proceeding right now without spending a whole lot of other energy. I don't know that we're going to have a whole lot of other choices in the next two three weeks. Um, I don't know. I respect all the questions. I just, I, I, from my own personal standpoint, I'm fine with proceeding on this. I agree. I, I think the thing that puts us at a, I don't want to put our employees at a disadvantage, but what puts us at a disadvantage is we have two people. You know, if we had 102 people, but we don't, so. That's why I think for us to look in to, um... Trustee Kritzmeyer's comment to, to look to be part of a of a larger group like the state of Illinois or another group where you can get some lesser expense and, and same or better benefits is the right way to go. Right. If you if you go with those bigger programs though, don't you run the risk of somebody becoming uninsurable if if the the if the provider changes down the road? <laughs> yeah, I think not, that's part of the evaluation. Yeah, I yeah to see if somebody's going to get dropped off the insurance or not. That that we'd have to look at that. Yeah, no, I mean sometimes when you go with with association type um, insurance plans or who knows if you can trust the state of Illinois. So <laughs> you know we can move on. I'm just. It's just hot air from my mouth. It's Does anyone feel like uh, confident enough to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I don't think we're going to find anything different in the next three weeks. We can do a detailed analysis for the next renewal a year from now, and we should. In the next three weeks, it's basically this or go to the uh, Obamacare marketplace, which I would not recommend for multiple reasons. So those are basically our two options in the next three weeks. This one in Obamacare. If that's a motion, I'll second you, Kent. <laughs> so okay, it was so, a long-winded motion. So yeah. Kent made a motion to approve the resolution authorizing a high deductible health insurance policy with Blue Cross Blue Shield, a dental insurance policy with Delta Dental, and a health reimbursement account for full-time village employees. So it's moved by Trustee Tanucci and seconded by Trustee Kritzmeyer. Um, village Clerk Schmidtke, that is a roll call, please. Trustee Tanucci. Aye. Trustee Kritzmeyer. Aye. Trustee Borowski. No. Trustee Michaud. Aye. Trustee O'Connor. Aye. Trustee O'Reilly. Aye. Okay. Um, the ayes have it. Motion carried. Thank Does you. Does Chris still get an answer to his question? 
<laughs> preferred versus non-preferred. Well, it's not just that, oh, yeah. it's the cost, right? I mean, I don't know anybody who is getting 100% of their prescriptions paid for, like nobody, even if you so, deductible. So that's that's one hundred percent after deductible. The deductible needs to be met first. But the deductible is only fourteen hundred bucks, is what I was told. That's like nothing. Uh, no, the deductible, the the employee portion. Oh, hold on, let me open this up. So you you don't have to, Kent. You don't have to. We can move oh. on. Um, but you know, next year, uh, to to manager Jackson's point, we need options earlier, and you know, um, you know, even looking at. The other alternatives, uh, as Kent mentioned, I think, you know, maybe, maybe there's something we can do differently, a stipend instead of healthcare. So we're not in the healthcare business, you know, I mean, something, I don't know, maybe there's, there's alternatives, but we really need to look at them because this is to the point earlier back against the wall again, right? Here we are, right? Have to pass it. And I don't want to be in that position again next fall. All right, thank you for the feedback, uh, Chris. Um, I'm gonna keep us moving. Uh, we now are into the village president and trustee reports. Uh, I know Amy commented on, it, commented on it earlier. I just wanna um, say that the holiday lighting ceremony, I think it turned out nice last Friday. Uh, I wanna thank the Long Grove Confectionery, the Historic Society, the Downtown Business Association. I'm sure there's many others that uh, helped put that together. Um, from communications, uh, you know, Bobby and team uh, to Greg Jackson, but uh, you know, they, they made it all possible and I thought it, it was a nice event. So glad yeah. I was able to attend. It was very nice. It was very hometown, small town. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And, um, and I, you know, I walked away thinking this was just a really nice community get together. And, and, it, and I think it, it, it helps with community building. <clears throat> I wish some of the merchants, or if not all of them, would have at least had later hours that evening to give the people who had gathered a reason to spend more time in the downtown. You know, even if we had brought in, uh, you know how they have those, like a, the Chris Crindle, Marks, Chris Crindle markets where they sell all kinds of things that aren't good for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> hot food and hot drinks and things like that. Like, and maybe that was more than they wanted to do, but it, it just would have been, I thought, it, I was surprised a lot of the merchants weren't open, so. I know I many of them are really challenged on staff. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I was just gonna tell you all the restaurants filled up afterwards, so just so you know. Well, that's good. So, cause <laughs> you know, I saw you know, Village Tavern, um, I know that uh, we ate at Joni's, it was packed, right? And I heard people talking about the ceremony. So, yeah. so it was good to see. So it actually brought people into downtown for dinner, so. Yeah, well, that's great. That's nice. It, it, was, it was a nice event. The brewery didn't do so good though. We went there afterwards and they didn't really get a whole lot of customers, but people were eating though, which was good. <laughs> that's because they filled up on donuts or didn't fill up on donuts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so I'll turn it over. That's all my report. I don't really have anything, but uh, Trustee Browski, do you have a report tonight? Oh, sir. Um, Trustee Kritzmeyer, I know you have the the uh, we have the report treasurer's next. report, which um, we're I'm we're now in a, a a rhythm where I get an early look, so I pose some questions, and Greg and Denise have been super responsive, and we had another conversation today, so. I'll say on the treasurer's report, there's some good things, but um, I'll, let, I'll let Greg and Denise lead when we get to that part of the agenda. Other than that, um, nothing else really. All right, thank you. Trustee O'Connor? No, Jeff took all my thunder. <laughs> all right, Jeff. Uh, Trustee O'Reilly? Uh, just the report that, um, that Greg had, had put together on, on on the uh, use of, of social media. And I, th I think what it shows is that the more money we put in, the more responses we're getting or the more activity. Um, I don't know what that activity converts to, um, but, but it, it's more activity. Yep, thank you for that. No, I saw that. You know, it's interesting because I, I think of, um like just even looking at the website, you know, I go there a lot myself personally, because it's the easiest place to grab stuff. 
So I wonder how much of us are using the website versus um, our residents, but uh, you know, cause it's not, it's not a ton of uh, hits on the website, right? So, but it's good to see that there, there's the activity, so. It's, it's all right. Um, Bobby, it, it, it feels like uh, the economic development, we've had conversations or there have been conversations, I've missed the last few on LinkedIn where exactly do we stand on LinkedIn? Is that a wish, a hope, a plan, or a not on the table? You know, we've tried to kind of get Melanie to define what she wants to do with it or or what we should do with it. And, and I don't think we've accomplished a, a, a direction. It's, it's, okay. it's not focused towards that. And, 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 to define what they want out of it versus what the village, what the village proper may want. Um, that discussion has not taken place. Okay. Thank you. That clarifies. It says that it's as much, it's as fuzzy as I thought it as it is, it is it in is my fuzzy. head then. <laughs> it's yes. as fuzzy as it is in my head. Thank you. Trustee Riley, anything else? No. Thank you for that report, Trustee Michaud. You might have to go off mute. Um, no report. All right, thank you. Uh, Trustee Tanucci, you may have given your report earlier, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the, the Lake Michigan water cost benefit analysis. Um, I just have a question for Ann. Uh, Ann, did you wanna talk about the downtown SSA in this meeting, the email you sent? Oh. It? Oh, good point. Um, so the downtown, we we have to approve all of the tax rolls for the SSAs by the end of the year. So that can go to Lake County clerk for collecting. Um, the HDLGBA for downtown, recall we have, there's an SSA that the downtown firms have voted on themselves and we've contracted with the HDLGBA to provide the services that SSA is supposed to fund to promote economic development and tourism. Bobby and others worked on that contract where they are to deliver both financial information, well, financial information, the tax roll information, meaning which properties are apportioned, which amount of the 165,000 um, or the dollars, and then their program. What are their, what's their plan for the next year? What is the budget that relates to that? And what are the results? Um, they asked us if we could uh, narrow the scope of their audit, which is part of that audited financials to only the 165,000, that is the SSA. And we agreed on that because they're kind of, they were pinched from COVID. It's also very understandable that in 2020, there wouldn't be a whole lot of program results. Um, but I'm, my patience is quite thin on all of this right now that we don't have anything going forward for next year. We have no plan. We have no budget. Um, we have no uh, results uh, of anything from 2021. We have nothing that links into, well, this plan and this budget are hoping to lead to those results, like visitors to the visitor center, um, hits to their website, all of the same information Denise provided for our website. Um, and importantly, we don't have a tax roll. And it, if that doesn't show up, we can't, in fact, send something to the Lake County clerk and there will be no taxes there. My and patience you, is quite thin you, with this. When you mentioned tax rolls, if you'll recall last year, they got, I want to say, 159 versus 165 because of the teardown of Red Oaks. And yep. that, that messed up the square footage. Has that, has that, um, those measurements been changed to accommodate the loss of that square footage? That's on the HDLGBA. On, oh, thank you. Go I ahead, Ben. jump in on that. Um, you, your recollection is correct, Bobby, that originally the SSA tax roll was based on square footage of buildings. Um, when we received the proposed tax roll from, it might have been LGBCP at the time, but whatever the, the acronym was at that time, uh, they had, without the village's 
knowledge or consent changed the way they went about it and did it in terms of square footage of the lot. Um, I thought it was the square footage of the first floor. Of the first floor building is what the SSA originally said. They delivered to us a, a, a tax roll that was, and they had changed the methodology. So I believe it was two years ago, the village board amended the SSA to conform with the methodology that the downtown merchants had agreed to. And so I believe that that reduction that you see may be simply a lack of uh, of no, it was because of it was because of the of the of the teardown that that we lost that they lost the square footage of that building, and it was either too late or forgotten to apply it. It, so, it's not ours to apply, though. It, it, you, they, the tax roll that they provide. So the tax roll was was missing that square footage, and that's how they ended up. So so that was not part of the the math, and that's how they got six thousand, seven thousand dollars less than they should have. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have a family emergency. I have to go right now. I'm fine. sorry. Sorry, Jenny. Oh. Bye. Good luck. Uh, just, just to clarify, the the levy that the village passed for 2020 was for the 165, 105, 91. That was what they asked for. the The audit indicates they've gotten something less that would not be based on the square footage that would simply be based on some of the taxes not having been paid. Well, the, the, the I, county, I would, I would ask county, that we look into it. I, I, I may be wrong, but but I, I don't think so, um, that, that it had to do with that building. And, and so I, I may have construed this inaccurately, but that was that's my recollection of, of why it happened. Well, that's how we actually found out that they gave us the wrong formulation. And that's why the, the village board ultimately changed the special service area. But the, the difference between what is reflected in their audit in terms of dollars received through the SSA and what we levied would be for lack of payments because the, the county doesn't care how we got the numbers, they just get the numbers and apply it. So that would happen. Well, all, I guess all I want is I want to make certain that they get what they're entitled to. And, and, and but, here's the thing, Bobby, and, and this is I'm out of patience on they're not entitled to it. There's a contract to promote things and to deliver a, a number of items of information. They've delivered the audit the narrowed audit as requested, but we haven't received anything else. Well, it's kind of like having children. Um. But it's been four years in a row. Oh, and okay. I mean, I could not I, have been- I've, I've, I've been on board for this since, since the beginning and, and thought at least we accomplished this audit, which is better than we've done in the past. But you're right, um, but, but maybe they, need a reminder that they got less than they had anticipated last year because of something. I, I guess I'm, I'm being even stronger than that. I am unwilling to, I am unwilling to support any more contract with that group if they cannot provide the things that they agreed to. I am, I am, I'm just, I'm out of time. I'm out of patience on that. And I, we could not have been more specific. September 1st was when the emails went out with, with very detailed in approval. So village manager Jackson, you're um, addressing this, right? Because at the next meeting, the tax levy has to go into place, right? So I, I sent communication to uh, Ryan today, knowing that he's the treasurer for, for the organization. Um, he responded by sending the audit, uh, the simplified audit uh, that uh, Trustee Kritzmeier uh, put out. I also uh, told him that I needed the uh, um, 
the levy numbers, uh, to your point, President Jacob, the levy numbers, uh, because it had to go before the board, the deadline was the last, the next board meeting. I have not heard a response back to that as of yet. Yeah, if we don't get it in, they don't get their money because it has to go in. Has, has anyone specifically laid out what Anne's point is? Yes. That, yes. Very specifically what, 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 we, what we agreed to? Yes. Yes, so, I, I, I had with uh, Ryan and uh, specifically said about um, a uh, capturing of the programs, how the money was spent, uh, reiterating what the board, uh, what the board had said to uh, the uh, at the board meeting in September or the end of August uh, to the HDLGBA, um, reiterated it. And in fact, I talked to him on Friday uh, at the lighting again about uh, submitting for the SSA and the uh, reporting that had to be in. So the specifics are in the agreement between the village and the association. This was from 2019. This is one of the documents that Ann sent out earlier. And um, section 2D, like David, says, as a condition of receiving the funding for any year during the term of this agreement, the business association shall, and then it goes through the whole list of things they need to submit, which they've only submitted one of. Is that right, Ann? Just one of those things that are in that list? And it sounds like they haven't unless, seen those things for years. Unless, unless somebody on staff has received anything different or Bobby's received anything different. I've only seen the narrow dog audit. And that's from, from my standpoint, and I can't speak for uh, uh, my predecessors or, or, you know, and I don't think Denise was involved with any of that, but this is the first document I've seen. The one I, the, the one I distributed today. Good news so, is we got something. Bad news is we still are getting most of nothing. Yeah. And we're not getting what they agreed to provide. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no action for us. So, uh, but I, I just, we have a responsibility that that tax is levied. We have a responsibility to make sure that that money is used to promote economic development and tourism. And I totally believe that's their intent, but they're, providing no evidence and they've agreed to and we've asked. All right, so um, I guess Greg, you own following up on this, right? And drag whomever you need, including myself into it. No, yeah, Bobby, it's, uh, it, it's just gonna be a constant, constant follow up, which I will make sure we do because that's the only piece we need to uh, complete our levy requirement for the, for the next board meeting, so. I'll stay. I'll stay on it. All right. Any 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 other reports? Um, if not, I, I would like to move us to the review of the October twenty twenty one Treasury's report. I know there's some great news in there about the uh, reserve, so I will be quiet and let somebody deliver that great news. We're at one hundred percent. Hundred hundred point four percent. If you move the decimal over, but who was doing that? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> good. I, yeah, we don't know who was the, the mystery doesn't. De but, but yeah, yeah, good news with that. There were some questions uh, brought up. Uh, uh, Trustee Kritzmeyer uh, had uh, mentioned just a short while ago. Uh, motor fuel tax uh, dollars. When we started looking at it, and, and let me preface this by saying that uh, we spent a good three hours on the budget today. Uh, trying to move the budget cycle a little bit quicker so that the board has more time to review it and scrutinize it as, as, as certainly as appropriate. But one of the things we looked at were motor fuel tax dollars to find out that uh, we initially were concerned that we were not getting all our dollars or perhaps we were um, we over projected in the, uh, with the budget. And it turns out that they're being calculated in a different line, which uh, uh, I found out just shortly before the meeting. Uh, so we look like we're on track with our projected dollars for uh, motor fuel tax. Um, a question was raised to the increased expense above budget uh, regarding legal services. Um, part of that explanation goes to um, a lot of money went to FOIA. A significant amount of money went to uh, working on FOIA. 
And um, there was a transition between uh, Bill being in his position, relying more on uh, legal assistance, and then the transition from myself coming on board. But um, I know Vic regrets to say that we used to talk often, now we don't talk so much. So, so uh, you know, we're going to see some of that uh, trail off as well. Um, we are still uh, seeing issues with uh, water and the deficit with water to uh, uh, money coming in, but that'll also be part of our cost benefit analysis uh, that we look at. It's an area that uh, Trustee Tanucci had some concerns about as well as did Trustee Kritzmeyer. Um, and I think that's about it on the question side. Can I throw a curveball at you though really quick? Um... And maybe Ann or Denise know this better, but um, the local use tax line item is the one where we were trying to capture the internet, you know, where landed sales tax, I guess, right? And we're trailing behind. Do we do we know why that is? I, and and I, if I'll take a shot at this, it, it we're trailing behind, I think, because the projection that was made there was a guesstimate. It was, uh, you know, we, the, the line had never been separated out of the sales tax line before. So it was kind of an assessment of, OK, where do we need to be here? If, if I'm wrong, Denise or, or Trustee Kritzmeyer, uh, jump in. We so. were we, we had received. So we used to budget for it all lumped together. We would receive two different threads of revenue. Um, part of the way that 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 revenue changed at the beginning of 2020 because of what they call the Wayfair case of receiving more sales tax when it's where it's delivered. Another rule changed at the beginning of 2021. And when we were setting this budget, we looked and said, we want to divide this out, keep an eye on it. We don't know where that's going to land. I think it was a guesstimate, uh, you know, in terms of like, what did we see last year? 2020 was higher than 2019 because of the Wayfair case. We didn't know what to expect for 2021. What we're learning is, and, and this came out at, at an IML con, um, conference session I attended, in, Illinois has an old antiquated sales tax collection. There, there are agreements across all the states to be able to collect sales tax where when it's delivered, if a place does not have a place of business in the state, um, every other state, not every other, most states collect sales tax at the destination, meaning if Long Grove has a lot of online deliveries, we should be collecting a lot of sales tax. But the state of Illinois has more of a, a source. So if I receive something from Uline that got shipped out of Lake Forest, Lake Forest gets the sales tax. If I receive something from Uline that shipped from Wisconsin, then we might have a chance at it. I don't, maybe that's a little long winded on their bill, but we're still trying to figure that out. And part of it is as more warehouses come inside the borders, we're probably not going to get much more. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's one to keep an eye on, right? Mm -hmm. We, and we wanted this, that was part of the reason is we knew the rules were changing and that's why we did break it out so we could track it separately. It, it. It's been coming in in the past, in the past, it was all lumped together in the budget. And, and we're still estimating the sales tax because it's a little bit behind, right, as well in these numbers that we see in the Treasury report or is this actual? We always get the sales tax back from the state in two, in, you know, two months in arrears. And mm -hmm. so that's why... You know, we end up with these big lumpy things in April when we figure that out in June. Okay. Yeah, so it's still but, kind of an estimate right now, right? Um, well, it's two months behind. So instead of six months, months it's four months. Greg and, Greg and Denise have been doing deep dives in there. The sales tax is a little behind, you know, people, okay. uh, but income tax is a little ahead. Or a fair amount ahead. Yeah, yep. Nice. I saw that. Yeah. All right. I have no other questions. Sorry to dominate there. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? No. Or I guess we need a motion to accept the monthly treasurer's report, right? Yes, sir. So moved. Okay, so it's moved by Trustee Kritzmeyer, seconded by Trustee O'Connor. Roll call, please. Michelle? Trustee Kritzmeyer. Aye. Trustee O'Connor? Aye. Trustee Borowski? Aye. Trustee O'Reilly? Aye. And Trustee Tanucci. 
All right, motion carried. Thank you. Um, we have the approval of the board meeting minutes from the November 9th meeting. Does anyone have any uh, comments or recommended changes? If not, I'd be looking for a motion to approve. I do want to make a note that I made a minor change that was pointed out to me. I left off trustee on trustee Tanucci and item number seven. So I added back trustee just so everyone knows. Thank you. <laughs> so was it Rita that was going to make the? Yeah, some mode. As amended, right? Second. Yep. Amended. Motioned as amended and then uh, seconded by Trustee O'Reilly. Roll call, please. Trustee O'Connor. Aye. Trustee O'Reilly. Aye. Trustee Borowski. Aye. Trustee Kritzmeyer. Abstain. I was not in attendance. Uh, Trustee Tanucci. Aye. All right, motion carried. Um, really, the uh, the next item in the agenda is to adjourn. Does somebody want to make a motion? Are, are we going to Are we going to vote on paying the bills? No, we did that. We should have done that last meeting, right? We did. We did. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. No, but it was in the packet up there too. So well, I, that's, I, that's yeah, yeah. I saw it as well. I got for a second. I thought the same. Okay, thing over let the me weekend. let me ask the question that that I had then. What's what's the solar invoice? There's a, I think it's a three thousand dollar. Yeah, you know I have it printed out, so let me just see because I, I did the same thing and I'm like, oh wait a minute, we did that. I was, looked at it, we did that last time. Uh, I don't see that. Fresh Coast Solar, three thousand. That's it. Is yes. that a? Is that a? That that may be a return of somebody's deposit. Could we ask? Uh, Often the, the yeah yeah. What, what was production. the pay? Who's the payee on that? It's a, Fresh it's Coast Fresh Solar. Coast Solar. Yeah. It's a, bond, it's a bond refund. Okay. Uh, that's okay. what I, it looks like a bond refund amount. Okay. Yeah, it is. I'm looking at the bill detail. It does say bond refund. Okay. All right. So, um, who did, did somebody make a move to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Moved by uh, Trustee O'Connor, seconded by. Second. Okay, Trustee Kritzmeyer, roll call, please. <laughs> Everyone wants to stay here. They don't want to leave. It's having such a good time. <laughs> Trustee O'Connor. Aye. Trustee Kritzmeyer. Aye. Trustee Borowski. Aye. Trustee O'Reilly. Aye. And Trustee Tanucci. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you Happy too, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you.